Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas video for you. And in this time, it's not going to be a tutorial per se, but I'm actually just going to be going over a third party plugin. The third party plugin is called Real Smart Motion Blur. And I know a couple weeks ago I just did a motion blur video on Vegas's built in motion blur. And I'm going to be showing you the differences between Vegas's built in motion blur and a third party plugin's motion blur and then the actual source footage. But the plugin is not free. It does cost money. It does not come with Vegas. It is third party created by a company called Revisions Effects, and they make a bunch of other plugins you've probably heard of, like Twixter and things like that. So if you want to look at some cool motion blur, let's get right to it. Now, before we get started in this, you got to understand a couple things about shutter speed and motion blur. I'm going to briefly go over it, but shutter speed basically controls how much light enters your camera. So a typical rule of thumb for films and things like that is the best frame rate to use to make it look cinematic is 23.98 or 24 frames per second. And you typically want to make your shutter speed double that. So 48 shutter speed or 50, which most DSLRs do. And that gives you the most realistic motion blur, you know, kind of like this. See my hands? That's motion blur. That's shot in cinematic frame rate and shutter speed. Now, accidents happen. You may set your shutter speed to something wrong and the motion blur turns out weird and it kind of looks real framey and or either there's not enough motion blur or there's too much motion blur. And that's where a plugin like this can come in and help fix that. So here's a clip of my wife driving, and we shot it in 23.98 frames per second with 50 shutter speed. So you saw the motion blur in there, I'm going to repeat it, and then pause it. And you see that's how much motion blur we get for shooting in this frame rate and shutter speed. Now here's the same clip, but shot in 60 frames per second at a 500 shutter speed, which should make no motion blur. Okay, so I'm going to pause it right there. This is a screen grab of her driving the same speed across this and let's compare them. So we have tons of motion blur, no motion blur at all. Very, very, very little. It's a crystal clear shot. You can read a license plate with this kind of stuff. But let's just say we accidentally recorded this shot and we need to give it some motion blur. That's where real smart could come in. So I'm gonna drag and drop it onto this and you'll see it adds a little bit of motion blur right here. And then let's go through these settings. So first one, we have the activation of the plugin. When you buy it, you click that button and it activates it. Now the track, what it can do is it can detect the previous frame or the next frame and create the motion blur off of that. It has a few display options, but the default one is source blurred. These other ones are kind of proprietary and I haven't found a need for them yet, so I always keep mine on source blurred. An awesome thing about this plugin is it can utilize your GPU. So instead of really long rendering times, you can enable GPU acceleration and the rendering speed can cut in half. Image prep is an option that you can have enabled if you have a linear color like this car specifically that you're adding motion blur to. It creates a better, more smooth, realistic looking track. If you have multiple colors, then the image prep, you may want to keep that one off. But let's look at the difference. If I turn it off, you see that it kind of looks like it's blurry, but we turn it back on. It adds a little bit more motion blur. It kind of looks a little bit better to me. So I'm going to keep that one on. Track RGBA. So if you have a clip with an object with an alpha channel, then if you enable this, it's going to make an even better looking motion blur. So this is kind of like maybe for text with a removable background and things like that. If you want to make that motion blur look really good, you can check this box because it'll detect the alpha channel and it'll make it look better. It has the ability to give motion blur to 360 video if you check that box. And then down to the two main components, the blur amount and the sensitivity. So let's talk about the blur amount. You can see it starts off at 0.5 and the sensitivity starts off at 70. These are the default settings that look the most realistic. So they kind of throw on the defaults for you right off the bat. Most of the time, you won't have to change a thing because once you drag and drop this plugin on there, it's gonna look great. But for something really specific like this, where it has absolutely no motion blur in this source footage, we need to add a little bit more. Blur mount, I'm gonna drag this one up and you're gonna see it's going to create a lot of blur. And of course, way too much of this will look terrible, almost looks distorted in a way. But and then we drag it less then it becomes to nothing. Now, here's a cool thing. This actually goes into the negatives because this plugin can actually take away some motion blur. So for what little motion blur we did have, I'm going to keep this at zero. So this is the original shot. Now, if we drag this to the left in the negatives. You're going to see it clear up a little bit. There's negative two, back to zero. See, playing with it. It actually sharpens the image 
so you can actually get a more readable shot for something with that much motion blur. So I'm going to keep this back at 0.5 and kind of adjust it from there. So that means we need to separate the motion blur enough to where we have almost another image of a tire back here. So we do that by dragging this motion blur all the way out. It's looking kind of bad. So let's go back to the track up here. We select this and do the next frame. Instead of it trying to detect the previous frame and make an adjustment from there, it's going to detect the next frame and look really good. You see that tire split up right there. And if we play the motion blur, it's spreading it out real nicely. Now we can also adjust the sensitivity. If we play with this slider, you can see what it does. The less sensitive we have it, the less it's actually going to do. It's actually going to take away from the motion blur. So for the most part, usually keeping it around 70, maybe even putting it up to 80 or so can benefit you. It really depends on your shot. So it looks like anything after 70 doesn't make too much of a difference. And I'm liking this shot right here. Now I know what you're thinking, what about Vegas's motion blur? Okay, so let's go into that. I put a clip over here as well with Vegas's motion blur. And this is what Vegas's motion blur looks like. It's different. It, it renders motion blur by bringing in the previous and the next frame and kind of turns the opacity of them down so it's kind of like a frame ghost from the first and last frame and it doesn't blur in between the actual frame that it's on and the previous two frames like real smart motion blur does you see there's a huge amount of blur actual actual blur and then with this one you just see framing so if we bring the motion blur up and down you'll just see more ghosting and that doesn't look like, you know, motion blur at all. And if we bring the super sampling down, you're going to see the quality of these frames go down to where they're almost nothing. And so you can't really make it look really, really good using Vegas's motion blur. Now I'm going to go ahead and play them for you back to back so you can get the comparison for yourself. And there you go, that's a couple of examples of this plugin in action. Now let's go to a scenario which a lot of people will actually benefit from, and that's putting motion blur on text, moving text. So I already have these rendered out over here. I have a 24 frames per second, no motion blur text bouncing around the screen. And anywhere I pause, it's gonna be crystal clear because there's no motion blur. Now, if we wanted to add motion blur to this, you know, like people would want to do for video games and stuff like that, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what it looks like with Vegas. So with Vegas' built-in motion blur, I'm going to play it. And you see, if I pause it, you know, it's blurry, but it's again doing that ghosting I was talking about. What it's doing is adding a frame or two of where that text is going to go and adding a frame or two of where it was and then turning the opacity down. And so you're kind of seeing this really interlaced, liney looking blur, which, you know, counts as blur if you're, you know, going quick enough, you're not really noticing it. But you can definitely tell, you know, it's... It's, it's liney, it's framey. So that's not what After Effects looks like, or that's not what, you know, Hit Film looks like. So if we go to Real Smart Motion Blur, let's play this. And that looks pretty good. Now if we pause it, at any moment in time, we're not gonna see the interlacing lines like Vegas' Motion Blur did. It's doing the whole blur in between the source footage frame and then the, either the previous or the next frame. So let's go ahead and compare them frame by frame. Here's the original sat in that spot no motion blur and then here's real smart motion blur sitting in the same spot and then here's vegas's motion blur and you could tell framey lines with ghosting actual blur and no blur and let's go ahead and look at some 60 frames per second footage so if they want to add some text like this going around you're going to see this hyper smooth mo no motion blur anytime i pause it there's going to be no motion blur but it's you know real hyper smooth high frame rate footage. Now let's see what Real Smarts looks like. Looks good. If I pause at any time, we're gonna again see the nice bits of blur in between there. Now let's see what Vegas's looks like. And it looks pretty good. You actually see with 60 frames per second, Vegas's motion blur really holds up a lot better. But let's go ahead and pause these on specific frames and analyze them a little deeper. Here's a frame with no motion blur right here. Now let's look at a frame with real smarts in the same spot. We have our, you know, nice looking blur right there. And then let's look at Vegas's. And we see that it looks good, like that blur, you know, we were talking about. But if you look closely, 
you see the interlacing lines and the, the motion blur that Vegas normally does. So again, it's not necessarily true motion blur that Vegas does, but Real Smarts is. So the only negatives that I've seen about this plugin is that it's a little finicky in certain times. So let's just say the first example is when you have some text, like the sample text we just had, when it's off screen and then comes on screen and then goes back off screen, you may notice a little bit of lines or not motion blur along the edges because Real Smart likes to analyze the motion blur of what it can actually see. It actually analyzes each pixel on screen. So if you have something coming off screen at a really quick pace, then it may not register the first couple frames with motion blur. Another thing is sometimes when you have repeating clips, like I have like, let's just say I have a five second clip and then I drag it a little bit longer so it repeats after that. Maybe I drag it to six seconds so that one second will repeat. If I add motion blur to that clip, usually right when it hits that five second mark, it will maybe black out. I've seen it black out that last one second, the extension that you've done. I've seen that happen too. In the past, I've seen it crash on certain systems. And so maybe like older versions of this, it didn't register new hardware so good. But this latest version is 100% fully compatible with Vega 17. So there you have it. There's my brief examples of explaining this plugin for you. I really like it. I can use it in many, many situations to make my footage look a lot better very easily. Instead of messing with Vegas's Control Shift B, dragging up the sliders of the super sampling and the motion blur amounts, and then getting those perfect and lining up the keyframes, you could just, just drag and drop the plugin on and you're good to go. You have motion blur added and it looks good. That's the simplicity and the awesomeness of this program. So if you want to give it a shot, description below, trial, download it. And if you like it, buy it. They go on sale, so you can wait for the sale if you don't want to pay full price, which those usually happen two times a year or something like that. That's going to wrap it up for this video. So if it helped you out, be sure to throw a like and subscribe down there because that'll help me out. And I got plenty of other tutorials on my channel for Vegas Pro 17 and Vegas Effects and tons of tutorials. Just, you know, check it out. I throw giveaways too, so maybe you can win some cool stuff. But thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.